Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory Where justice and mercy embrace There the Son of God gave His life for us And our measureless debt was erased Jesus, to You we lift our eyes A very good morning to you all. We are so glad you've tuned in today and pray that you'll be encouraged and uplifted by the different parts of the service. Unfortunately, it's been another difficult week with the reintroduction of tighter restrictions. We are all looking forward to a time when we'll have greater freedom and see each other 
face to face. The desire for freedom is the theme of our Bible message today as we start a new Bible teaching series called Lockdown to Liberation. It's about the life of Moses, one of the most important people in the whole of the Bible. In the coming weeks, we'll be following Moses' story as he leads God's people from lockdown, slavery in Egypt, to liberation through the Red Sea, and then on their journey through the desert to the Promised Land. Today's message will be given by David Campbell. To link in with the children's video coming up, we've been sending out free resources and activity sheets to the parents, grandparents and the carers for the kids to do. If you would like to receive these by email, get in touch using the contact page on the church website. The address is given below. Once again, the Youth Bible Group will meet online after the service at 12 noon to chat and learn about today's Bible passage. With the new lockdown, you or someone you know may be self-isolating or vulnerable and need support in the days and weeks ahead. We are here to help. If you need food or medicines delivered or someone to talk or pray with, please let us know by using the contact page on our church website at www.madisonevangelical.co.uk. The restrictions we face are limited compared to many Christians across the world who are persecuted for their faith. In some countries, lockdown has been going on for years, with believers having to meet in secret. Their faith in Christ teaches us patience and perseverance. Richard Wurmbrand, who died in 2001, was an example of love for Jesus under pressure. He spent 14 years in prison for telling others about Jesus in communist Romania. His book, Tortured for Christ, is still an international bestseller. After he was freed, he and his wife Sabina started the Voice of the Martyrs to help persecuted Christians. Here's a short video released in 2018 about his commitment to Christ while in prison. For three years, I was in solitary confinement. I had only my thoughts for company. But I had God. I remembered what the martyr Savonarola wrote. He said, There are two kinds of Christians. Those who sincerely believe in God and those who just as sincerely believe that they believe. Did I believe in God? Now the test had come. Every night when the 10 p.m. bell signals time to sleep, I begin my nightly routine, beginning with prayer. Prayer, of course, was forbidden. Prayer was my only escape. The beatings would not prevent me from talking with God. My wife and my son were always in my prayers. It's how I held them close.
Richard Wurmbrand's faith was a demonstration of 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 6 to 7 in the Bible. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Whatever trials God brings us through, we need his strength to keep going. So let's sing together, Lord, I need you. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart You're the one that guides my heart Lord, I need you, oh I Let us pray. Our God and Father, we pray for our nation, our locality, our families and the church community. Help us to see your hand at work in 2021. Teach us to appreciate that you are all powerful. You are kind, gracious and loving. You know all about our situation. You know all about us as individuals. In the first book in the Bible, we read of a young girl who had run away from her angry mistress. Hagar was alone and was in a desperate plight until you intervened in her life. She learned that you are a God who sees us at all times and in all circumstances. So this Egyptian lass learned the important lesson that you see each one of us as individuals. 
Father, in our service this morning, we are going to be looking at the book of Exodus at the time when Moses was born. It was a desperate time. The people of Israel were afraid because of the new Pharaoh on the throne of Egypt and his wicked agenda. Pharaoh did not want the Israelites to have children. And just then, this couple had their new baby son. But we thank you that your word records that you heard the groaning of the people of Israel. You came to rescue them from their terrible plight. So Lord, we thank you that you see the situation of every individual watching this service online this morning. You hear our prayers, our cries for help, our silent groans, or even tears of sadness. You're a faithful God. We can rely on you completely. You do not change. The old hymn says, As thou hast been, thou forever will be. We have sometimes been disappointed when people have changed and we feel let down. The hymn writer said that people one day soothe, the next day grieve us. But Lord, you do not change. You are the same God as you were in the Old Testament. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You are the God of Moses. Gracious God and Father, help us to trust you fully today. Amen. Stories of the Bible Baby Moses This is Moses. Hey Moses was a descendant of Joseph's brother Levi. Hey. Joseph and his brothers had many children and grandchildren who lived happily in Egypt. Eventually, a new pharaoh came to power who knew nothing of Joseph or what he had done. This pharaoh feared the Israelites because there was a great number of them living in Egypt, so he wanted to put a stop to their prosperity. Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves. He made them work long, hard hours building up Egyptian cities. But his plan didn't work, and the Israelites grew more in number and in strength. Eek. So Pharaoh made a rule that no Israelite boy would be allowed to live in Egypt. This is where Moses' story begins. You see, when Moses was born, his mother saw that he was a special baby. Hmm. And she kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer keep him a secret, she made a basket and put him in the Nile River among the reeds. Moses' sister stayed to watch what would happen to her baby brother. And soon the Pharaoh's daughter came to the edge of the river. When she saw the basket, hey! she sent her servant to get it. When she saw the baby, she felt sorry for him, uh -huh. thinking he must be an Israelite baby who wasn't supposed to live. Then Moses' sister asked the princess if she would like her to find an Israelite woman to take care of the baby. Uh -huh. So Moses' sister went and got her mother. Moses' own mother took care of him until he was old enough to live in the Pharaoh's house, where the princess adopted him as her son. And so, Moses, an Israelite boy who wasn't supposed to live, became the adopted grandson of the Pharaoh and lived in the palace as God prepared him for a great destiny that was only just starting to unfold. Sing with me, and can it be?
Exodus chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Hello and a very good morning to you all. Today we're starting a new Bible series called Lockdown to Liberation, and it's based on the life of Moses. At a time when a new lockdown has just been announced, it's my prayer that as we see the almighty power of God rescuing his people from slavery in Egypt and guiding them through on their wilderness journey, that this will encourage and inspire us in the weeks ahead. But before we look at our passage this morning, I want to explain the importance of Moses in the Bible. One Jewish encyclopedia says that among the notable Jewish people of history, Moses towers above them all. He's not only a national leader, it's he who fashioned the nation of Israel 
transforming them from a horde of slaves into a kingdom of priests. Moses was the all-round man of God, a leader, judge, guide, lawgiver and intercessor, God's incomparable prophet with whom God spoke to face to face. But as we'll see as well, he also had faults and weaknesses like us, and this will help us to relate to him. The book of Genesis tells us the story of the beginning of the nation of Israel, and this story continues in the book of Exodus. In the final chapters of Genesis, Jacob and his sons arrived in Egypt to join Joseph, and Pharaoh gave Jacob's family the fertile land of Goshen to live in. So they settled down and how they prospered. Now here, at the start of the book of Exodus, 400 years have passed and Jacob's family of 70 people had grown into over a million people. God had blessed the Hebrews just as he promised their forefather Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 1. He said, I will make you great, a great nation. But his other promise in Genesis 12 7 to give them the land of Canaan had still to be fulfilled. God would first need to liberate his people from Egypt. And this morning, we'll see how the Lord started to bring this about. Firstly, let's see why their deliverance was needed. In chapter 1, we read that a new king, whom Joseph meant nothing to, came to power in Egypt. This new pharaoh became suspicious of the growing Hebrew population. If Egypt was attacked, he feared they'd join forces with their enemy and defeat them. So he made them slaves, building his new cities. And his ruthless slave masters beat them severely. How they needed deliverance. But the brutality backfired. Because the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. Pharaoh realised his labour camps only made them fitter and stronger. So he, he gathered the Hebrew midwives together. Now, this wasn't a cosy call the midwives episode of a Sunday evening. Pharaoh told them, I want you to kill every baby boy at birth, but let the girls live. It was an attempt at genocide. Perhaps the midwives were a little scared of Pharaoh, but verse 17 says this, they feared the Lord. And fear means to respect and to highly honour. Many times in the Bible it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And wisdom is the ability to choose right from wrong, good from evil. So these midwives, they defied the king and let those precious little boys live. They literally delivered the babies from evil. You know, every human being is precious to God because each one of us is created in God's image. It was her belief in the value of every person that led Corrie ten Boom, a Dutch Christian woman, to rescue many Jews during the Second World War. When the Nazis invaded the Netherlands in 1940, Corrie and her family joined the Dutch underground and they hid Jewish refugees in their home in Harlem. A secret chamber for six people was built behind a false wall in Corrie's bedroom. It was called the hiding place. When the Nazi troops swept through the neighbourhood, a buzzer in the house signalled the danger, giving the Jews about a minute to hide in the hiding place. In February 1944, with the help of an informant, the entire Ten Boom family was arrested. Corrie and her sister Betsy were sent to the notorious Ravensbrück concentration camp in Germany, where sadly Betsy died. But before she died, Betsy said this to Corrie, There is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. Corrie was freed on Christmas Day in 1944, and she spent the rest of her life telling others of God's deliverance and how Jesus was her hiding place in the storm. You know, being a follower of Jesus Christ can be hard and discouraging. Life circumstances, like the lockdown, 
and opposition to our Christian faith can feel oppressive at times. We may even cry out for deliverance using the prayer that Jesus taught us. Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Corrie ten Boom gave wise advice when needing deliverance. When you look to the world, you'll be distressed. When you look within, you'll be depressed. But when you look to God, you'll be at rest. Jesus himself gave this wonderful promise. I will feed, I will lead, I will build my church and even the gates of hell will not stand against it. So friends, do not fear. Jesus is the head of the church and he will preserve and he will deliver his people. Then we see from this passage, the deliverer was provided. Furious at the midwife's rebellion, Pharaoh orders his own people to throw every Hebrew baby boy into the river Nile. The Egyptians believed the Nile was a god and the babies were being sacrificed to appease his wrath. However, in God's mighty plan, he uses the very same river to deliver and save Moses. In chapter 2, verse 1, we are introduced to Moses' parents and they were expecting a baby. We can only imagine how they felt living under Pharaoh's dreaded decree. I'm sure they had neighbours whose babies had been snatched away and drowned. Did they secretly pray for a baby girl? However, a son was born and straight away they knew from God that this was going to be a special baby. We're told in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23, by faith Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. They protected Moses for as long as they could, but there came a time when Moses crying would have been heard by Pharaoh's security services. So his dad and mum did what every Christian parent does for their own children. They committed him to God for salvation and for protection. Moses was then hidden where the Egyptians would never look, the place of execution, the River Nile itself. Gathering reeds together, they made a little basket to keep their baby safe. You know, when our first son was born, my parents gave us the Moses basket I slept in when I was a baby and I repainted it so our sons could sleep in it. But I never checked if it could float. So how did this little ark keep Moses safe and dry? Well, it was coated with tar and with pitch, which made it waterproof and buoyant. And it was anchored among the reeds to stop the currents of the Nile washing it away. And keeping watch nearby was Miriam, Moses' sister. Her heart must have skipped a beat when she saw Pharaoh's daughter and her bathing party approaching. Miraculously though, the princess saw the basket and it was lifted out of the water. That's what Moses means, drawn out. In God's wonderful plan, the cries of the baby Moses touched the princess's heart and she decided to protect him. She needed help though, a surrogate mum to feed and nurture him. So Miriam steps forward and suggests her mum would do a brilliant job. What an excellent idea, says the princess. And I think I'll pay you the standard childminding rate too. So Moses' mum raised baby Moses until the time he was adopted by the princess. In the palace, he received a world-class education in law, administration and military strategy, skills that God would use to lead his people to freedom 70 years later. What a mighty God we have. Pharaoh didn't have a clue or stand a chance. He didn't know who he was dealing with. You know, even the most wicked schemes of men are in the purposes of God, the way he fulfills his plan of salvation and his ultimate blessing for his people. We see this most clearly 
when God provided for us his ultimate deliverer, Jesus Christ. In Peter's sermon in Acts chapter 2, he says, Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead. On the cross, Jesus our deliverer carried out God's mighty act of rescue from sin. Jesus said in John 8, 34, that anyone who sins is a slave to sin. We are bound to it. We can't break free of it on our own strength. We all need to be liberated, delivered by Jesus. And through his death on the cross, Jesus in love paid the price of our deliverance from sin. He took our sin upon himself. By repentance and faith in him, we no longer are slaves to sin, but we become servants of Christ. And praise God, we're delivered from the power of sin over us too, because Jesus is alive forevermore and his spirit comes to live within us. May each one of you come to know and follow Jesus, the miracle working, promise keeping and delivering God. Amen. In closing, we're now going to sing a song of hope, which reminds us that Jesus alone provides light in the darkness and freedom from any oppression we are facing. Please join with me in singing now, Way Maker.
Let's pray together. Almighty God and loving Heavenly Father, we praise you that your plan for your people is to bless and not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. Thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ and his mighty deliverance from sin's penalty and sin's power. Lead us in faith through this time of lockdown as we journey to our promised land of the new creation where we will dwell with Christ forever. We pray, Lord, for your people around the world who are facing persecution because they are different or their face or race doesn't fit. We especially bring to you our brothers and sisters in the church in Nigeria at this time where there have been more genocide over the Christmas period by Boko Haram. Comfort the bereaved, protect your people, and like the Hebrews of old, let your church grow and shine in the midst of suffering and oppression. Lord, have mercy on dear vulnerable children at home and abroad who are exploited and in danger this very day. We pray for a miraculous intervention like Moses on the Nile. We ask for those in power or influence like Pharaoh's daughter to give protection to the weak and to the orphaned. Lord, as we think about the godly midwives of our story today, who delivered and protected the babies, we want to pray for all workers in the NHS, carers, and those supporting and supplying hospitals. Thank you for the tremendous work they do, especially in the pressures they are facing just now. Give them wisdom, Lord, grace and strength to carry out their roles and to save lives. Lord Jesus, in a world that is shaken by health and political turmoil, you are still on the throne and you will remember your own. We close with the words you taught us to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you once again for joining our online service today. We hope that you can take some encouragement from what you have seen and heard into the coming week. In today's shot, we've just flown over a snow-covered Corkleroy, and we're now looking over towards the region of West Lothian. Thanks for watching, God bless, and we look forward to seeing you next week.